All right, here we go. We're gonna, first thing we're gonna do is take care of the big things. And the big, first big thing here is measure this header and cut it. So I'm gonna slide it over to the line, my tape over to the line that bumps right up to the king stud. It covers the, the cripple and goes right over to the king stud. And I look right here and it says 118 and 3 eighths. One, one, eight, three eighths. That's your memory right there. All right, we're ready to build the wall. So we've cut our header. I'm gonna split these uh, plates apart. And all you do is you just put your hammer in there, work it back and forth, and then shake those boards. Now, these nails here make a real, can make your day real bad if you step on one. So first thing I do is I just knock them down and Take them out. A good thing to use duplex nails too, because some framers will use uh, eight penny sinkers, which are the green nails, and they'll just turn the board up. And so those little nails will be sticking up on the inside of the wall. And that can be a little bit difficult on your foot when you're walking through the house. All right, so again, our plates are like this. We'll pull them apart and we'll still be able to read them. And I just quickly measure at seven feet. We're gonna be at about eight feet, so. It's nice, just clean up a little bit. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, take my header And I've already looked down this header and it's very, very straight. But remember, always to crown the header before you put it in. This header does not have a crown. It's very nice, it's nice and flat. So we'll use it just the way it is. All right, you see I've lined up my, my header with my line this between my king and my cripple stud. And I'll walk down here and I make sure, just double check that it, it lines up over here. So that's very good. Now I will nail this together. I'll nail this plate right up to the top, this plate right to the top of the header. And I'll just stagger my nails back and forth, back and forth, top to bottom as I go down. And I'm using vinyl coated 16 penny nails. The vinyl coated nails are nice for framing because they're made to go from fir to fir or, or pine to pine, but just not made to go into the green board. And these heat up as they go in and they form a little bit of a glue and it keeps, keeps uh, the material from squeaking. So I'll stick two at the end and then I'll just do basically what my layout is. I'll just march down here every 16 inches and just put in one nail, one top, one bottom. You really want to make sure though that you don't have any, that the, that the uh, plate isn't hitting something and, and sticking up. Otherwise you'll have a, a, a bump between your header and your uh, plate. And as I'm standing here, I also can push the plate down with my feet or the header, toes or on my heels. So that my feet kind of tell me if there's a bump or not. It's also nice, it keeps the header from bouncing around when you're nailing it. All right, I'll pull this, this plate over a little bit so when I put my studs on it, they don't fall off the end of the building. And I'll get it kind of lined up with the plywood so when I put my studs on, they'll be straight. And now it's time to just run over and grab some studs. Now a stud is a pre-cut 2x4 or 2x6 or 2x8 or whatever. 
it refers to a length that when it's installed in a wall with the plates, it will give you one inch higher than the, than the uh, ceiling height that you're asking for. So together, a plate, a stud, a top plate, and a double plate will give you eight foot one, or nine foot one, or 10 foot one, or 11 foot one, because you have that extra one inch for when you put your sheetrock on the ceiling, you still have an eight foot ceiling. So since we're looking for an eight foot wall here, we're using 92 and a quarter inch studs. And this is a pre-cut stud that you can get at any lumber store. And again, I will always eyeball them to make sure that they're all crowned in the same way. Now I know how many I need. I see one, two, three, four, five at the end, and then I just I follow my red marks. And if they are crowned, what you do is you lean them all the same way. So if I decide the crown's on top, I'll lean my, my studs all the same way. All right, here we go. What we're going to do here is we're going to build our um, little, little pieces that fit inside the wall. At this time, we'd build our partitions, and we'd build our end of wall pieces. So in this wall, all we have is an end of wall piece. So I'll build that and show you how that goes together. We do that first because we want to make sure that that's there so we don't have to stop and do that. We kind of want to have all our bits and pieces together and then we just frame. Since I have this space right here, I'll, I'll build a partition. Excuse me, I'll build a end of wall section. Take two studs. And make sure they're crowned the same direction if you need to. And I just lay some blocking in between. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll tilt my nail on the first one just so it doesn't go into the, the bottom piece. Because what I want to do is I want to make sure that these blocks are stuck together nicely but not to the other board. And I just give a little space in between. This is a good way to eat up the, the scraps of wood that you have around the job site. All right, now I have one piece that has a bunch of blocks on it. What I'll do is I'll set my first nail and then I'll get my square. And I'll stand on it so I make sure that it's nice and flat. Feels like it's hitting something. Make sure it's nice and flat. And then I'll put my square across this one and I'll knock it over until it's right even with the other stud. That way when you set it down on the, on the plate, it won't be tilting. Okay, now we know that it's in line. Now we can go ahead and just nail it to pieces. Make sure it's lined up. Now when you're putting the nail in, so it's going through the block and into the other stud. And I just put as many nails as feels good in this. And usually that's at least four on each side. Make sure as you're doing this that you, you don't have any bumps on the side, that the blocks aren't sticking out at all. And just keep everything lined up nicely. It may take a little pulling or pushing. And then I'll throw it over again and throw a couple more in each one of these to really make sure it's not going anywhere. 
So this is why we work hard to make sure that this piece is nice and square, smooth, and solid. It's, it's for the end of your wall. It's where your next wall is going to go up against. So we'll put, spring this over here. And we'll make sure that it is crowned, even if it is crowned ever so small. And now we can go ahead and start building because we have no partitions or anything to uh, worry about. So just make sure that this is nice and flush on the end. And on two by fours, you do two nails per stud. On a two by six is three nails per stud. Two by eight is four nails per stud and so on. All right, you see that right here I have a layout. Now if this piece of um, sheetrock comes over here and lands on the center of this, it's just gonna fall through here. So I'll lay that stud that I need to have right there to cover that up, right there. And sometimes when you nail, your stud will pull off the plate a little bit. Just tap your nail a few times and it should suck that right up. All right, now it's just following your pattern. All right, now I'm gonna put in the king stud and it's the same length as the regular studs. Again, it's just scissoring up right next to the uh, header. Now the king stud is kind of uh, critical because it's the first thing that one of the inspectors will look at is how many nails are into the header. The minimum number of nails you can have into a four by 12 header like this is six. And those nails should be going straight into your header like this. But you don't wanna do those first. You wanna make sure that this stud is all the way up to the plate and nailed into the plate first. Otherwise, if it's down like this a little bit, and you start nailing like crazy into here, you're gonna have this half inch gap and you're gonna have a big bump in your wall. So make sure that that stud is tight to the header and tight to the plate. And now you can go ahead and nail it. So step on the header and feel, make sure you feel that, that they're nice and level to one another. And here's another thing, I have this big knot right here. So I want to avoid that, that knot with my nail. All right, and that's how you put in a, uh, a king stud. Well, as you're building these wall ends like this, you'll notice my blocks are all different sizes. It doesn't matter. It's really just to give you the spacing of four and a half inches because it'll still leave you one inch to nail your sheetrock on. See, so three and a half inch wall that goes into it is gonna leave an inch left over. That's why you build these. So your sheetrock will have backing at the corner of the wall. So just grab whichever scraps you can find, throw them in there. Hopefully they're in decent shape. If it's nice fresh wood, a block like that will work, but if it's old dry wood, that block will split to pieces. So I'm just getting lucky here. All right, I'll start at this end and move back in towards the header. I don't fall over first. It's 
say one thing about uh, plates. If your end piece like this is out past the end of your plate, it's bad. If it's in a little bit, it doesn't cause any problems. So if you're going to err one way or the other, make sure the corner is inside just a little bit because you want those plates to touch the other plates nicely. And again, the six nails in the header. Alright, the next step is just go ahead, slide up your bottom plate and nail it off. Make sure you stay on the lines that you've made for yourself. Make sure again that the corner piece is not beyond the end of the, of the plate. Make sure that you look up there and you see this is the king stud coming, uh, coming around that it's nicely in its place down here. Just bear in mind that this is your little storybook down here and you want to follow that story very well. So you can see by our story across this plate here that we've made for ourselves, we're missing a C, a post, a post, and another C. Well, we remember that a C is a cripple and the cripple is going to come down. Obviously, we can't put it into the header so it's coming from the bottom of the header down to the bottom, uh, to the bottom plate. So what it does is it supports the header from the bottom. The Kingstead supports it from the side. The Cripple supports it from the bottom. All right, to make a Cripple, all you need to do is use a regular stud, and you can slide it down just like this. And what people do when they're they're doing framing real fast is they'll just reach underneath here, make a mark, slide it up and cut it. We can do that. Sometimes it's tight, sometimes it's loose. Um, it's a 50-50 deal. I, you know, if you have the time, to me it just makes more sense just to go ahead and measure your distance. I have 80 and 13 sixteenths. So you can see from my mark originally to my mark measuring, it's really very close. It's like a sixteenth di difference. So I kind of believe that laying them there and making a mark, as long as that mark is pretty straight, you can use that to make your cripples. Because you can always you can always cut them down if they're a little bit too long. But you'll see that fits pretty nice. If you see it shoving the plate off where it's making a big gap between your king stud and your and your plate, that's not good. It, it made a little gap between mine, but all this wood shrinks up a little bit in the big run after it's been in the house for a while and all those little differences should make up for themselves. Now with cripples it's very similar to the top of a header. You march down the, the, the cripple and stagger your nails. Making sure that the Making sure that the two uh, boards are flush to one another. You don't need to toenail anything in. Then what you generally have to do is knock your king stud back in because all the pounding knocks the nails out of the header. And then the last thing you do is you put two nails and a toenail like this up through the header and into the king stud. And that just ties everything together. And again, this is something that the inspector will look for. So from the inside, you nail into the cripple at a 45 degree angle up through the header and into the king stud. 
come down and do this one, this uh, cripple. I'll crown it again. And slide it into place. I'll take a look at it and see if it's knocked the plate down at all down here and it hasn't. And again, just walk up the uh, cripple with the nails. Sometimes if a board is uh, down too low and you need to raise it up, you can just tap a nail underneath it and then step on the other board and that will bring it up. Or you can just lift it up with your hammer until you feel that it's nice and flush. And there is the two cripples. There, there are the two cripples. Just a little trick I use is sometimes when I'm measuring, I just put my square on first. And I just measured for this, this uh, post here, and I know it's 80 and 7 eighths. So I'll just, since holding a pencil in one hand, holding your tape and holding a square, um, or holding this marking, it just sometimes it takes a little extra time. Every little bit of time helps. So what I do is I just put my square, I measure and I put my square right where it needs to be, grab my, t my pencil and make a mark. It seems to go a little bit faster. In order to get this, this post in the uh, correct place, I have to get a carpenter square and transfer my markings from my plate down onto my header. So this is my post. All right, so slide it in just like, like I would with a slide it in just like I would with a stud. And when I nail this again, I want to make sure that that doesn't happen. I don't want these these two pieces of wood to be that far apart. So. I'll lift it up, throw a nail underneath it on either side. It's still a little bit high, so slide my nails out a little bit. And that's a little bit better. And the only way to nail these in is the good old toenails. I'll come down here and I'll nail it right where it needs to go between my two arrows. And with a four by four, if there's two four by four, if it's four by four by four, that's how you remember, you put four nails in a four by four. Four by four by four. That'll keep the four by four from spinning or twisting. All right, now we have this opening for our window. See that it doesn't line up exactly. So I give it a little love, love tap and get it right where I want it. Matter of fact, I think I'll stick one more nail from the header 
right down into that four by four. So we've got five nails in there. Okay. Again, when we lift this up, I'll be able to measure down from the header and get my length of my window correctly on my cripple and on my four by four. And we'll be able to just fill this in and we'll just transfer the, the layout that we have up here right down onto our header. Oops, here we go. And that way we'll have something to line up with. This isn't so critical because the window will be right here, but it's just nice to have. Um, when we go ahead and build this window, I'll show you how to transfer these markings onto your window plate and then we'll just cut the studs to the correct length and we'll, we'll have a window opening. Home Improvement Camp. Have at it.